Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. Wednesday nights. I like them better already. What a word, man. What a word. Glad you uh, are on our team. Ryder Cup at such a young age. Grateful for you, Caleb. A lot of wisdom in that. You're, you're a youth with wisdom. And uh, wisdom beyond your years, man. I've seen you grow over the years. I think you got more wisdom when you got married. And, uh, but it's been cool to see the journey, man. I just remember when you were just a young kid and youth and to see you up here. You know, he's on our, you know, he works for the church and he is in charge of all the videos. So when you see epic videos, which we do epically, whether it's a merge, a cherish recap, whatever that is, it's your great leadership and wisdom and an eye to see and ear to hear. And there's a touch of God on that stuff. And those things go viral and people are like, that's church? Unless you're in Coronado, and then they get all offended. Like, yeah, that's church? It's amazing, man. It's been, a, it's been a real pleasure to see that. And I'm excited to see what God's already been doing, but where he's about to do in this next season of your life. And I really believe that God is accelerating not only with that gifting to see and hear, but it's going to be a blessing in for the church, but also in the marketplace. Don't let anybody put a ceiling over you on what's possible. You can do anything you put your mind to, and God's going to put the right armor bearers around you that are going to open doors, that you're going to see leadership and qualities in people that are going to scale you and scale this church. And, you know, it's always the thing as a, as a leader, you know, Pastor Jurgen's always said, you want to raise and we're a raise and release church. Raise and release, raise and release. And you can say that until an insecurity comes up because you're like, if I raise somebody up better than me, what, what am I going to do? But true identity and knowing people that got you and knowing that there's a God that's trying to get something through you that you are going to raise up some of the greatest people that have ever been in video, the arts, creative things, and you're secure enough and bold enough and a great leader that you're always thinking like that. And I think it's, it's going to accelerate you because God can trust you with that. So, amen, amen. Man, I feel like there's a little touch in here, so I'm going to pray for us and our Ryder Cup team. Where's all my Salt Lake City guys that drove down? I see you because you're the tallest cat in the hole with no handicap at all. Scratch golfer. There's some, how many guys came down, drove down today? 10 hours just to be at church on time. Come on, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's hungry. I mean, they could have left any time they wanted to today, but they had an intention. No, let's make sure we get there and get in time for church on Wednesday night. I mean, that's, that's intentional, man. So let's just turn our palms towards heaven. How many want something tonight? This word came out of Pastor Jurgen's word on Sunday. He, he said a line that pierced me on Sunday when he was preaching. Who's your teacher been? There's only two teachers, wisdom and pain. And, and that thing hit me like a Holy Spirit dart. And then God's been working on it. And he's like, you're, you're going to teach, you're going to teach this congregation, you're going to teach San Marcos and Bresci wisdom and how to see it and look for it, how to find it. You don't really notice things until they're in your subconscious. And I, I feel like God's wanting to highlight to each one of us, how do we become more wise? How many know in this next season, we're going to need wisdom as a people? How many know the world's getting crazy? And we want to have discernment and wisdom on how to know. Some people got tripped up in the first round, but you found here, you found Awaken. 
Something's been awakened and stirred, but now God wants to give you wisdom to have eyes to see things supernaturally, eyes to hear things that the world isn't hearing. Where the world is confused and goes to fear, you're going to go to faith, and it's going to build something in your spirit. God wants to give you wisdom so you can trample on serpents and demons, but you got to have wisdom to understand where the enemy's lurking around your finances, lurking around your marriage, lurking around trying to cause fear, getting you to shut back when he's trying to get you to step into something new. You're not supposed to step back. You're supposed to go from glory to glory to glory. You can't do that without wisdom. So tonight, Holy Spirit, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the Spirit to stir wisdom, to get a revelation, an understanding of what your word says about it. God, I thank you for a prophetic pastor that can release an anointing with one word. God, we received that word tonight. Let it continue so we are steeped in it to have a revelation about it that we can walk out of here with tangibles, God, to use application in our life to see things accelerate. And God, we, we bust every ceiling over our life right now. And we want to know the revelation of beyond all understanding. Let us have greater understanding, greater relationships. And Lord, for the men, let us help us understand our wives even better. In Jesus' name, amen. That's for you. All right, you may be seated. Thank you, worship team. That was amazing. Boom. Boom, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, so wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Who is your teacher is the title of the message tonight. I know Wednesday night we like to go a little flow, but I felt like I just needed to switch it up a little bit for a little teachy-preachy, teachy-preachy. So we're going we're gonna to drop it like it's hot. And uh, I'm going to be, the context tonight is Proverbs 3, 13 to 26 out of the NLT. I just liked it. But I want to give us three revelations around it, and just a breakdown of what God really showed me. I, I heard that, and I couldn't get it out of my head on Sunday, and then it was stirring Sunday night, Monday, you know, every time I tried putting my hand to something, it broke. Why is that funny? No, you don't have to tell them. I can tell them myself, you know. I tried mowing my lawn for the first time, just thought, you know what? I'm going to mow my lawn, and I destroyed my lawn mower. So there is a figure eight in the middle of my lawn. <laughs> Funny, huh? Then my internet went down, and I went and bought a lot of money worth of parts and messed it up more. Thank goodness for AV Hero, shameless plug. Good job, Pastor Johnny Day. Uh, and then um, what else happened? What else did I break that day? Oh, I tried to wash my truck, and now it looks worse. Yeah. It's three hours of frivolity with water, though, and my three children, so that was great. Uh, but nothing got accomplished on Monday, pretty much, except I did get a revelation on wisdom, which I probably should have started with, and everything else would have turned out better. Some of you don't care. You're just judging me. Okay, I know how to wash a car, people. I just don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. So let me read this verse. Joyful is the person who finds wisdom. The one who gains understanding. For wisdom is more profitable than silver, and her wages are better than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. She offers you long life in her right hand and riches and honor in her left. Sounds pretty good. She will guide you down delightful paths. All her ways are satisfying. Wisdom is a tree of life for those who embrace her. Happy are those who hold her tightly. By wisdom, the Lord founded the earth. By understanding, he created. Somebody say created. created. The heavens. That's by understanding. By his knowledge, the deep fountains of the earth burst forth, and the dew settles beneath the night sky. My child, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them, for they will refresh your soul. They're like jewels on a necklace. They keep you safe on your way and your feet will not stumble. You can go to bed without fear. You will lie down and sleep soundly. Some of you need to hear that. You need not be afraid of sudden disaster or the destruction that comes upon the wicked for the Lord is your security. He will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. Amen 
to that. There's three things that I broke it down. There is a wisdom, there's worth in wisdom. It's more precious than material wealth. There's a work, the Lord created the universe by wisdom, and there's a will, receiving a reward for wise living. So those are my three contextual points that I'm gonna bust out of here. But King Solomon, the son of David, said to the, he was the wisest man. That's what the good book says. And he was instructing his son concerning the timeless value of wisdom. In this text, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he reveals the worth of wisdom, the work of wisdom, and the will of wisdom, purposely meaning that there are rewards, benefits, of living wisely. I wish someone would have taught me about what this book was about when I was about 18. I was doing some very dumb things around that time. I got a license at 18 for stupidity. And let me tell you, I could drive that train hard. I could tell you more stories tonight that would make you feel a lot better about yourself. I would convince my brother of everything and I would encourage him to try this because this is what real men do, and it never worked out good for him. He needed more wisdom than me. He was just dumb enough to go along with it. Michael, if you're watching, I just want to say now you're much stronger, brighter, more wisdom, and that's probably because of all the lessons I taught you. I'm not judging you. I'm using this as an example. I hope we're still friends. I say that because one day I had some rubber cement here and I put it in my hand and I light it on fire and I'd be like, you couldn't even handle this. And I'd go like this and put it out and I put a little bit more rubber cement. I'd light it on fire and I said, I don't even feel it because I'm Indian and I'm that tough. I put it out. I put some more. Three times I did it to him just showing him that I can handle the heat. He better get out of the kitchen. And I quench it out and I said, you want to try it? And he goes, yeah. I said, dip your hand in, good. I rubber cemented his whole hand. By the time I lit it, it was a blowtorch. I then panicked on the inside. He looked like he was part of the Olympics running with the torch, but he had no torch, it was his hand. So I surrounded it and threw a blanket on it, thinking that'd be good, and it caught the blanket on fire. I then realized my parents were asleep. I said, run to the kitchen. He started running to the kitchen. Halfway there, I go, that's so dumb. That's closer to mom and dad's room. Turn the other way and run this way. He ran in this way. By the time he got to the bathroom, I noticed there was more than rubber cement falling off his hand. Was it something I said? Was it the rubber cement joke? Well, okay. So the rubber cement, it was melting, dripping, and it was actually all his skin. I then had to go. I just said, all right. Bro, I'm sorry. Here's 20 bucks. Get in bed. Just shut your mouth. So he got in bed, and I was next door to his room, and I heard him crying mostly the next hour. And I finally go, you know what? Maybe I should tell my mom and dad. So I went in there. I said, Mom, Dad, I think Michael hurt himself. You need to get up. And by the time he get up, I'll never forget when he went like this. My mom screamed, panicked. We were at the hospital that night for a lot of hours, and I had to confess my lack of wisdom on massive amounts of rubber cement. So I learned that rubber cement is not a toy. Don't try that at home. One of my other wisdom stories, I, um, I learned how to put dry ice in a little bottle like this and just pour a little water in it and cap it. Listen, if any of you do this in youth or any of you adults do this because you're testing your pastor, I'm going to tell you, it's going to cause problems. I'm not responsible for what happens next, and I am not going to go to jail like a J6er, okay? So listen, <laughs> I only tell you that because it was my first time I ever had to hire an attorney. It was over me learning how to do that, and I would go set them at different locations. I realized if you put more water or less water, it would time it differently, so in one night in Lake of the Pines, California, I had over 256 911 calls setting a record for that great community of Lake of the Pines. That security force was up all night long trying to figure out who's igniting bombs, and they sound like a massive bomb. And so anybody in the military, I need to ask for forgiveness for because there was serious PTSD in Lake of the Pines that night. But what happened was I showed a couple friends that were dumber than me, and when I left, I was on vacation, thank God, in Hawaii with my family, and some of those people went and learned how to do them, but they put them in mailboxes, which is a federal offense, and uh, next thing I know, I'm being arrested when I got back from Hawaii, because I was the ling reader that uh, 
taught them how to do it. Good news, good news was my attorney got me off. Unfortunately, I sealed that record because they lowered it from a felony to a misdemeanor because I wasn't there. Uh, but when, now when people look at my record, they're like, why do you have a sealed record? Which I should have never sealed the misdemeanor, but my parents were so prideful of their son. They're like, we're sealing this right now. No one's ever going to look. But it looks like I committed like some gnarly offense. Now it's way worse. Don't seal it if it's a misdemeanor. Just confess it. So other dumb things. I mean, I could go on and on and on. But it's not about me tonight. It's about you getting wisdom from all my mistakes. So let's keep going on the wisdom. On the wisdom. Speaking of that, if you're a teacher here, stand up right now. I want to pray for you. Whether it's awake in any school, stand up. I want to pray for all our teachers with wisdom because thank God for teachers that poured countless hours into me that I promise you I wouldn't be where I am today without the great teachers, and they need more wisdom, double dose of the Holy Ghost. Stay standing. I'm praying for you right now. Reach out your hands to every teacher standing. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you tonight for those that have said yes to the call. The greatest, one of the greatest calls being a teacher in public school right now, Lord. Help them. But God, give all wisdom and discernment to these teachers to lead the next generation of youth in godly ways. Lord, let them have discernment to see kids, the gold on the inside. We don't know what their home likes life, but Lord, we know these teachers can see things. Give them supernatural understanding, grace, and love to love these kids through any circumstance. We thank you for them saying yes, and may they be increased in benefits and salary in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So listen, I want to define uh, what wisdom is and what it's not. Wisdom is not necessarily the result of good education. The world's full of well-educated fools. Wisdom is not academic achievement, a high IQ equivalent to acing the SAT. It's none of that. Quite simply, wisdom is skillful living. And that word is, that's Bible all through the book of Proverbs which is the collection of wise aphorisms of how to live a blessed life, the primary word and the one that's used 45 times in that book alone, however, is the Hebrew word called, it's, I don't even know how to really pronounce it, hakma. How'd I do? Thank you. I worked on that, I didn't. But the principal meaning of that word, it means skill in Hebrew. The same word used elsewhere in the Old Testament numerous times describes aptitude of every sailor, singer, craftsman, administrator, counselor, and so that word is used over and over for a skill. So we can confidently say that wisdom is that knowledge when acted upon results in skillful living. So we don't want just to have all this knowledge. We want to act on the knowledge and put a skill To it, wisdom is knowing the irrevocable result of an action before the action begins. Living wisely is living with intention, thoughtfully choosing the right and avoiding the wrong. The right might be popular, and when it's not, when others are watching and when they are not. It isn't about what other people are thinking about. It's making the right choice even when no one's looking. Listen, wisdom means living your life with God as a primary reference with a moral compass, in it, intelligence, a discernment, and knowing that real life as it is really lived is lived according to the, pretty much the law of sowing and reaping. We got to understand that is a law that the Bible puts out there. Wisdom dictates that in this life you give is what you get. What you give is what you get. And how you treat others is how you will be treated. And righteousness results in blessing and sin results in heartache, headache, every single time. Living wisely, choosing the moral and therefore often difficult path while avoiding the immoral and therefore most often the easy path. The wise person, and this is where I did not understand, lives with eternity in view. Eternity matters. This life is short. And we got to understand what the eternal looks like and focus on that. It's, it's amazing to see how we can get so short-minded when God's like, I got you. 
I got you. Why are you stirring up what's going on with short-term thinking? So number one, the worth of wisdom is verse 13 to 18. If you have your Bibles, highlight verse 13 to 18 because this is the worth of wisdom. It's pretty much talking wisdom is more precious than material wealth. You get long life. It says honor. It says riches. It says happiness. It says peace. How many want some of those five things right there? That is the worth of wisdom. In the NIV, it says, happy is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you desire cannot compare with her. That's just verse 13 and 15. Listen, it's, it's amazing being under Pastor Jurgen over the years. I'll go to him and, and I'll, I'll be asking him and talking. And finally, I'm like, man, I'm going to him for all advice. Because in the beginning, I'd be like, oh, he's not a business guy. I don't want to waste his time. And I go to him like, I know, Pastor Jurgen, you're not in like, you know, entrepreneurial thing. You're just, and he goes, hey, man, God says he gives me wisdom. Let's pray about it. Then he'll drop a nugget, which is so counterintuitive to anything I would have done. I look at him like, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. I think I'm going to do it. And then I do it, and then blessing and all these things have been happening. And at first, I was just like, I, I'm going to call him up. It's like, Pastor Hurricane, can I Venmo you 20 bucks for a word? You know, it's like, yeah, I don't need 20 bucks for a word. You know, what, what do you, I would just hear wisdom and wisdom. I'm like, how does this happen? You go, he goes, I'm in the word every day. The more you're in the word, it's not what God said. This is a rhema word. The Holy Spirit can give you a rhema word. So many people, you know, I grew up with, they're all Christianese, just want to tell me what the word said. No, I want to know what the word is saying. And it's amazing, the more that I would get around it and understand, the more I'm in the word, the more I have the Holy Spirit leading me on a word, the more wisdom I'm getting, because it's a rhema word, what God is saying about any situation I'm in. Listen, if you've ever had a little kid, I got a four-year-old, and I was trying to teach him about money. You know, my eight-year-old's got it, my 10-year-old's got it, so I always tell him, hey, find money on the ground, you're a money magnet. So my kids, if you ever hear them scream out, they find anything, a dime, anything, they'll be like, I'm a money magnet. And, you know, all my kids, they, the, you know, the penny per se drops for them at some point. But I always start off with the same thing, and I go, all right, here's a bunch of pennies, Mare Mare, and here's one quarter. What do you want? Every single time, they're going to go for the pennies, <laughs> 10 pennies, because in their mind, conceptually, it's more. But people don't understand this because... Currency is valued according to an abstract concept that we've assigned value to. But when kids look at it, they have to at some point trust daddy that this is more valuable than all this. So every time I've done this with all kids, they've all picked the 10 pennies. But as they learn value from the value I have assigned to it and they trust their dad, they finally understand that this has more value than this, even though that's more. So it's interesting to me because at some point, we have to understand in Proverbs 3, it begins with an exhortation to get wisdom with the description of the priceless value or worth of wisdom. The point here, wisdom is more precious than any material wealth you can ever dream of. Just as our children trust that a quarter has more monetary value than 10 pennies, we got to trust God that wisdom is more valuable than gold, silver, and rubies. Solomon is trying to teach that if life offers you gold in one hand and wisdom in the other, by all means, choose wisdom. If there's a fork in the road and we have to choose fame or the road of wisdom, whatever you do, take the road that leads to wisdom. I'm going to tell you so many times growing up, because I never saw Jesus or saw God stories or saw real miracles, I just grew up in church, I was choosing the road over here because I never saw power. I would pray for healing, but I never saw it because I never saw someone with the knowledge actually take it to the next level. Book of Miracles, that's a real thing for us at this church. It's not the book 
in the, it's not the faith in the book, it's the faith in the God that we're putting the names in the book going, we are putting a name in this book with an intentionality that we believe that God can heal them, restore their marriage, break an addiction. We see it all the time. People come to this church going, you know what, I go to another church, but we've been trying for babies for five years. We ran out of money for IVF. We're just here. Next thing you know, nine months they're pregnant. Right now, we have a plethora of pregnant women up in here. And then they might just come because they hear there's like, you know, revolution pregnancy over here. Hey, we, we don't even know if we're going to stay, but hey, we got our baby. I was like, so funny, the penny drops because it's the faith of the house. And I'm telling you, it started with somewhere because someone had wisdom. Pastor Jurgen said, man, we're going to dig up some wells. We're going to go after some supernatural pregnancy. We're going to go after some miracles and healing. We're going to go after, we're not going to pray for millionaires to show up. We're going to raise millionaires. We, it's just like believing that we're going to get financial wisdom in this house. You know, if you notice wisdom's benefits in verses 16, 17, 18, long life, honor, riches, happiness, and peace, if you forgo those things for wisdom, wisdom will eventually result in these things. It's amazing. I remember years ago, someone I decided, like, I've put the foot in the ground. I'm not missing Sundays. You know, I'd speak in my profession, and uh, I'd be invited to speak all over, and, you know, just, they happen to book me on Sundays. I'm like, finally, I had this revelation. This, this seminar is Friday. It's Saturday and Sunday. Hey, guys, I will come to any of these seminars I get invited to. You don't even have to pay me. I will speak on Friday or Saturday. I won't speak on Sunday. Oh, no, we want you to be our closer, you know, trying to puff up the ego, which really stands for edging God out, and, you know, try to sit there. And, and I finally said, no, I'm getting more, more juice. I need, to be, I need to get my soul right. I need to be in wisdom. I need to be in the house. I serve on a team. I'm not going to forego my teams. I'm not missing a Sunday. And one of my mentors, influencers, big boy in the hood said, you're an idiot. They'll, you'll be outcasted. You'll be a mockery. You're going to leave on Saturday so you can make sure you don't miss church. And I said, that's exactly what I'm saying. And I remember, I said, why? I don't need to stroke my own ego. I need to do what God's telling me to do. And when I laid that down, I was blackballed for a year. But I'm going to tell you, my life, my marriage, my kids, my business, everything else flourished on these intangible things that I could never get there if I wanted to. God started moving on my behalf because I put the right things first. Not the right things for my profession, because they were all giving me their advice, but the right things for my spiritual walk, the right things for my spiritual maturity, the right things that needed to be in the right alignment because there's an order when it comes to kingdom. And I'm gonna tell you, when I did that, sure, I got blackballed for a year. But then when it came out, one guy finally said, no, 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 I want you to come MC the event. Still to this day, I MC two of the biggest events in my profession, and they just still invite me. And they're much bigger than speaking at these little one-offs anyways. They honor me, they respect me, and God's like, see, I got you. And he's done that over and over and over. But I had to get to the point where letting something go that I thought was important for my own ego and trusting God that he had me way more than these people in the world had me. We got to all learn that. Next notice, wisdom proceeds with the revelation that wisdom, order, righteousness, the law of sowing and reaping was built into the creation by God from the beginning. Number two, the work of wisdom in verse 19 and 20. The Lord created the universe by wisdom. Wisdom founded the earth by understanding he established the heavens in verse 19. The work of wisdom, what it means is that the work is a constituent part of God's character. It's infused the attribute into every, actually, DNA of creation. Consequently, to reject wisdom and follow the path of foolishness is not only unnatural, but it's a rejection of God himself. If you want to know how to create things in your life, understand the work of wisdom in your life. Number three is the will of wisdom, which is verse 21 through 26. The believer will receive rewards for wise living. Listen to this. I'll read it to you. My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So they will, number one, be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way. Your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down 
and your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of the sudden terror nor the trouble from the wicked when it comes, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Listen, you gotta understand what he's saying with wise living. Wisdom, number one, will result in life and grace, verse 22. Wisdom will bring safety, verse 23. Wisdom will result in tranquility and assurance, verse 24 and 25. Wisdom will bring the Lord's protection and confidence, Verse 26, in six short verses, the word will is associated with wise living eight times. If he's not trying to tell us something about the will of wisdom, we are missing it. Wisdom will result in long life and grace. Living wisely will bring safety and security. Wisdom rewards its companions with tranquility and assurance. Ordering your life after wisdom brings God's protection and quiet confidence in the midst of trouble. Not a bad bargain. Get wisdom and get all these blessings beside. How many need some of that up in here? I'm just preaching to myself. Listen, in James, it tells us in, one, uh, in uh, chapter one, verse five, in his letter, he says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. He gives it liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. You have not because you, I'm gonna tell you something. There's some things that we need to start seeking wisdom on. Instead of running after this deal, running after that deal, trying to buy this house, buy that house, why aren't we seeking wisdom first and seek the kingdom first and all these things will be added unto you. Instead, poor Pastor Jurgen has to come keep up, keep cleaning up the mess, keep cleaning up the mess. Hey, yeah, I just wanna let you know we're moving to so-and-so. Oh, did you get wisdom on that? God confirms his word. Well, no, we just feel like it's family, it's this, it's that, it's finances. What's God saying about it? What steps are you taking for wisdom? There is a blueprint. What is the word? Have you gone to the word? I don't know, I'm preaching to myself. Paul reminds us in Colossians chapter two, beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. We sometimes, and I'm guilty of it because I grew up in the personal development world, like, you know, we're always seeking, you know, I'm going to this seminar, that seminar, this seminar, man, I'm hyped out of my mind, you know, yes, coming back, yes, I'm buying this next program, $25,000, $250,000, I'm like, man, I got a lot of knowledge, what am I doing with all this hype? I got a good playlist for my morning routine, I'm doing great breath work, <laughs> me and Wim Hof are tight, you know, it's like, but what am I doing? The most important thing right here, you can't get wisdom apart from wisdom's author. To find out what is wise, what is righteous, what is true, what is beautiful, you must get into the word of God. I only got half the room clapping. Listen, pretty much the B-I-B-L-E. It's enough for me. Dude, I should be a lyrical gangster. Where did that come from? Bro, that's your anointing, bro. Thank you for that, yeah. Honesty, integrity, thrift, character, generosity, fidelity, loyalty, always, always, always bring blessing and peace in the end. Greed, immortality, selfishness, dishonesty, duplicity, it always, always results in sorrow, heartache, regret, destruction. How do I know? Ask Pastor Samuel and I. We get to deal with it all the time. It's amazing, everyone says they're coachable. I've never met one person. I own a couple coaching programs. I've had a couple masterminds. Everybody comes in and is like, oh yeah, I'm coachable. I'm coachable, I'm so coachable. I've never had anyone check the box, I'm not coachable. So when I sit down with them and I start talking to them, all of a sudden you feel the guards go up, you feel the Heisman coming. You know the thing, I was like, bro, I'm just trying to talk to you about some blind spots I see. No, no, I'm good. It's justification, justification, justification. It was like, bro, you pay me to help you. Now I'm a pastor. You don't pay me. I'm just helping you for free. <laughs> you want wisdom? You asked for it. I'm having coffee with you, and now you're rejecting me. You're starting to get offended. <laughs> so if you want to find wisdom... Go to God and his word. Secondly, to get wisdom, 
Learn from your past mistakes. Pastor Jurgen said that on Sunday. You're either getting wisdom or you're getting pain. Pain. Wisdom is a schoolmaster, and it's called the school of hard knocks. How many have ever been there? Listen, the book of Proverbs observes elsewhere that as a dog returns to his vomit, so too does a fool return to his folly. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Madness has been defined as doing the same thing over and over and over again, but expecting different results. Negative consequences for foolishness are life's butt kicking in the booty. If you're tired to get kicked in the butt, get some wisdom before you're making those decisions. Some of you aren't picking up what I'm putting down. If you're on your marriage number five and you found your previous five wives in bars, maybe you ought to try to find a wife somewhere else. That's a word. If you have had several businesses fail because of dishonest partners, maybe it's time you just go into business by yourself. God designed the universe in such a way that wise choices bring blessing and foolish choices bring disappointment and regret. We gotta learn these lessons, but it's gotta be a correction in our heart. Wisdom comes from learning from life's mistakes. Number three, finally, wisdom comes from listening to our elders, our teachers, the people that have gone before us. Proverbs chapter three begins with, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Young people, listen to your elders. You don't have to do or take advice from them, but listen to them. My dad's made more money and lost more money than any other man I know. I listen to him. I don't take advice from him, but I listen to him. Do you understand the difference? They've experienced more life than you have. They've learned, usually the hard way, what works and why it doesn't. They've had disappointments. They've had friendships sour. They've had businesses fail. Why aren't you listening to them? They love you. They don't want you to go through the same heartache they've had. Use a filter. Use discernment. Look at their fruit. Wisdom is so important. As this church grows and we get spiritual maturity, my expectation is if you're leading a team, you have more spiritual wisdom. We can't get tweaked as easy as when we first came here. Let's get a little bit thicker skin. We're trying to build the kingdom. We're trying to find those that are lost. You're already saved. Don't be so sensitive. We're at war against an enemy that wants to cause division. Proverbs says that it is foolish, a foolish child that ignores the instruction of his parents. Heartache invariably follows the rejection of a parental rebuke. The fifth commandment says we are to honor our mothers and our fathers. Why? so that our days may be long in the land which the Lord your God gives you. The revelation from scripture is very straightforward on wisdom. We could talk about it all day long. Wisdom is a special commodity. It's desired for God's people. It's desired for you and me. You're here on a Wednesday night. What do we need to get tonight? What is somewhere where we maybe have a blind spot? Who are we allowing to teach us? Is it wisdom? Is it pain? Is it an elder? Is it someone that's gone before us? There's a blessing and peace in being a wise guy. I'm just praying. I want to pray for us corporately. I'm going to ask us to stand. I'm going to pray for us. And then if you need extra prayer, come down to the altar. I will tell you something. It's beyond understanding. I make decisions now not based on how smart I am. It's based on what the Holy Spirit's nudging me and God confirms his word and I take it to my pastor. If you're in a connect group, take it up to connect group. If they don't know, they should have a maturity to say we don't know, then you go to coaches. You go to your pastor. It's amazing how many times people tell me their decisions they make after they already got their house on the market. Or after they've already quit their job, they're like, yeah, I'm thinking about quitting my job. Well, I heard you already quit. Well, I did. I just didn't want to tell you. (laughs) I'm not really sure if I should have because, good, how much rent? You got six months at least? Oh, no, I actually can't even afford next week. Okay, that's wisdom. 
You quit your job? Oh, yeah, I'm just really believing God's going to give me a better job. Okay. Just to be honest with you, that was dumb. Yeah, my wife and I, or my girlfriend and I, were going to Hawaii. Okay, that's interesting. What are you doing? Oh, you know, we're going to stay in separate rooms. All right. I got to pray for one of two things. Probably both. Because if you're a man, you're not going to sleep in that other room. Wisdom is, why didn't you ask to take some friends or ask us, do you think that's a good idea, Pastor? you think I should take my girlfriend? I want to do something really special for her. Nope, you're going to stumble. Let me know what time you're going to be back so I can see you on the altar on Wednesday. You know, it's like, what do you expect? And if your hormones don't work and you're like, no, I totally am not even attracted to her, now i got to pray about another problem. This is real life, people. We're preaching real life tonight. I don't want to pretend. So many people are like, Christian, he's praying. If you're a dude, you will, like. No, this is wisdom. I got too many young people just doing crazy things and then seeking wisdom afterwards. And it's really called cleanup. I should have been a firefighter so I could put out the fires at Skazen. At least we got a sheriff. He can go handle some stuff, you know? Turn your palms to heaven. Listen, we can't take life so serious. We, how many know we're all going to sin and fall short? We're all going to sin and make dumb choices. The thing is, what are we going to learn from that dumb choice? Do we sit down and do we process it with someone healthy? Number one, process with somebody that has fruit. So you don't make that dumb choice again. And then if you don't want to make the dumb choice in the first, just get with somebody, bounce the idea. You know what's funny? And this is a real study. When you think about a thing, the study says it will make sense because you're thinking in one part of your brain. But when you speak it to yourself out loud, no one else around, it goes out your mouth, which you have to use the language part of your brain. You then have to hear it in an auditory part of your brain, which processes completely different So you will think a thing, and you're like, dude, that's so smart. I'm going to be a millionaire. You'll say it, and it will hit you, and you'll be like, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. And it's going to save you so much time, because that way when you go out to coffee, and you say it to me, and you see the expression on my face, I'll save you the whole pain of that. You won't even have to get offended with me, because you've already heard yourself say it, and be like, that was dumb. Because I'm going to say, hmm, why don't you say that one more time slower? Did you just hear what you said? I actually did. Thanks for the coffee, Doc. This is real life. And it will help you process so many things. But even if it is a a great thing and you speak it, two things, because it talks about the work of God. When you're under stress or you're in reaction mode due to the world falling apart, you lose creativity and you cannot build things, which means you can't make right decisions. Bring in the people closest to you. You'll have to swallow your ego. you have to pull down your pride a little bit because you're gonna let someone see you in a vulnerable state. That is the greatest thing. When it talks about being bold and courageous, I'm telling you, the most bold thing and the most courageous thing you can do is when you are vulnerable, in the middle of your mistakes, is to check your own pride because pride cometh before the... And if you keep wanting to get your butt kicked, go ahead and still stay prideful. And don't take advice from people that love you. Because you know what? We want the best for you. We want you to win in life. You might not like what we have to say, but we are going to try to encourage you. And as I pray, I want you to have ears to hear and a spirit to receive. And if you feel as I pray for you, something gets stirred, I'm going to ask my ministry team to come down to the altar and pray for you until we break off that thing because the devil wants to cause deception in your mind, wants to get you stressed, not thinking straight. Let pride come up, let your ego come up, let a wall come up to guard your heart for the wrong reasons. I need every one of us. There's an assignment on your life. There's an assignment on the DNA that God imprinted on you to do something for the kingdom. And some of you are stuck due to a wound. Some of you are stuck due to pride. Some of it's ego. Some of it's whatever or fear of looking dumb again or fear of putting yourself out there. 
wisdom tonight is let God heal and restore what needs to be healed. Father, tonight, come on, I'm going to pray for everybody. Just open your heart. Father, tonight, help us consider what you're doing in our world and through our life. Help me keep an eye towards eternity as you show me your majesty and your power. Thank you, Lord. Please grant me, when I say me, just repeat this to yourself, wisdom so I can stay the course and better magnify your name. God, you are not the author of confusion, but I know there's an enemy who wants to deceive and confuse me. So please instruct me and give me a heart for your wisdom, a growing desire on the inside for understanding and insight. Lord, I wanna know wise choices that will watch over me, keep me safe and fill me with joy to guide every decision I need to make today, tomorrow, and the future. Wow. What an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.